Hey everyone, Brad here with the Hornet King channel. In this video, I'm going to be removing an awesome subterranean yellow jacket species for a client. Plus, I'm going to be taking you guys a tour around my property to show you all the nests that I've relocated this past season, including six bald faced hornet or aerial nest building yellow jacket species, one subterranean species, and one European hornet nest inside my barn. Here's the video, guys. Check it out. This is an eastern yellow jacket colony, Vespula maculifrons, that's a subterranean species that had made their nest in the ground next to this retaining wall. Vespula maculifrons queens in the beginning of spring will suss out mole tunnels or any kind of rodent tunnel to start building her nest. So that's what happened here. This is, was originally either a vole or a mole tunnel and the queen had started her nest inside of that tunnel. As the colony starts to develop, and more adults start hatching, they'll start excavating out that tunnel to grow the comb and the nest structures larger. So by the end of the season, you can have a very, very large hole dug simply by wasps chewing little bits of dirt and carrying it out bit by bit. Their excavating is absolutely incredible. So you can see the numbers coming out of this hole. This was a nest with probably about 1,500 adults inside of it. and as you can see, when I'm pounding on the ground, they just pour out from the entranceway. So oftentimes people suggest in my videos about just gassing the entranceway and that that'll kill the nest and this and that. Um, this is a prime example as to how that's not always successful. Um, this tunnel went completely horizontal for about eight, eight or nine inches and actually had a dip in it before it actually got to the nest. So if you poured any sort of fluid down in that hole, um, it either A, would have ran right back out, or B, it would just kind of stay in that lower um, dip in the tunnel and would have just absorbed into the ground from there. So mole tunnels have multiple different branches and swoops and angles and things, so you never really know where the tunnel is going to end up getting into the nest. So in this case, this nest was right to the left of where the entranceway was. So I was actually pounding on the ground and I could hear the hollow sound underneath of the grass where the nest would be. That's a queen right there in front of us. So queens and males were hatching from this colony. So you can actually see a lot of males coming out. You can see queens coming out. Uh, males typically aren't aggressive, but they will try to leave the nest if the nest is disturbed. So that's what's happening here. There's a lot of males that are coming out to the entranceway and it's merely just to escape. They're not going to go to attack. You know, they're, they're freeloaders and they are uh, escapees. Um, and then the queens are coming out too because they're, they're trying to escape as well. They typically won't attack. So I spent a lot of time, there goes a queen. I spent a lot of time here just vacuuming up as many of the adults as I can from the outside of the entranceway. And that way when I start digging into the nest, there's going to be few that are going to start swarming. Uh, swarming individuals are not leaving the nest. They are swarming me to attack, and then they'll go back to the nest itself. Um, you'll see here that there are ones that are that are crawling past the vacuum. They're being actually pretty smart because they, they don't want to get sucked up. They can feel the turbulence. So with the vacuum process, I put the nozzle perpendicular to the entranceway and waiting for adults to try to fly so I can vacuum them up. So there I just located where the nest was and I can hear that hollow spot in the ground, so that's where I'm going to shove my shovel in to uh, pull up this sod and expose the top of the nest. A couple latched onto my glove here. I like to pull them off even though they can't sting through the glove because I just don't want to give them that opportunity. The longer they're on me, the longer they have a chance to, to sting me. So you start to see some of the adults flying out of the hole I just made and less coming out of the entranceway. They sense that disturbance, and instead of going out through the tunnel, they're going out through the top of the nest. So in, as with any of my ground nest removals, as you've seen, I use my vacuum as an excavating tool. So all the fine pieces of dirt and things that are landing on the nest, I use the vacuum to just suck them off instead of trying to use my fingers to brush them off and potentially damage the top of the nest. It's always a personal vendetta to try to get nests out all in one piece. Uh, specifically with ground nests, um, I don't like leaving anything down in the hole or having things break apart. 
Um, when comb breaks apart, then there's tons of adults in between the layers of comb, and that just releases them to fly. Um, if the comb structures stay intact, they typically will stay in between the layers. And the key here with a ground nest removal is just taking your time. Uh, the more hasty you get, the more they're going to swarm. And not necessarily that that's a problem as far as them getting away or quote unquote escaping, like some people may assume. Um, it's more just the fact that that's fly, flying adults that you then have to try to batten down later or wait for them to go into the, the original tunnel to, to vacuum them up. So I try to make it as, as time efficient as possible, if that makes sense, even taking my time doing it. So neat how the, the vacuum just exposes all the different uh, layers and gaps in between the, the, uh, the nesting material. So the outside fluffy stuff you're seeing was the envelope. So just like a bald-faced hornet nest builds envelope around a nest from the outside, these nests will have that same type of structure from inside of the hole. And this is a massive nest. I mean, this is a really good size. All those white caps were going to become adults. So those were actually become queens or males, depending on who laid the egg. If it was a worker, it would become a male, and if it was the queen, it would become a new queen. It's a beautiful structure, and I was able to get that all to all in one piece, and get it into the bin pretty much without incident, and uh, show up to the camera here so you can see it from inside the bin. And then covering it up pretty much right away, because any of the, the adults that are swarming from the outside are going to sense the nest and sense the queen in there, and they're going to fly into that bin. And that's just more that I have to try to take a, take out later. So just put the bin back on top, or lid back on top. So I want to show you guys the inside of the cavity here. So all of this space was dug out by the wasps themselves. This was not a cavity that was here before. This cavity was made by the wasps. So one digger had to go through and pinch with their mandibles and pinch out a little tiny, less than a pea-sized amount of soil mush it together, and then carry it out the entranceway and drop it in this guy's yard. Look how pretty that envelope is. So, so that envelope is laid just like bald-faced hornets. They, they lay it from the inside layer out as opposed to the outside layer in. There's, a, there's the queen at the very bottom there to the right of my nozzle, and she almost went up in the nozzle, but then I, I saw her and wanted to grab her. So this is the queen for the hive. You can tell she's more robust, more mature, and has a little bit more of an orange color to her than the uh, new queens had. People often ask why I don't release the queens. Um, the, she would just die anyway. She can't fly anymore. So she, she going into the vacuum is really the most humane thing to do. And once I start pulling out this envelope, you start to see how clean the pebbles are at the bottom. And a lot of these adults here at the bottom are males and some new queens. But look how clean the pebbles are. They not only dig out the soil around the stones, but then they actually pick all the soil off the stones. So they're left with the super clean pebbles. It's just really wild. You, I mean, to think that those were underground is ridiculous. And that root was picked completely clean all the way around it. So it was basically circumcised of soil from inside of a dark cavity. You don't get to see it in the video because I didn't have the foresight to keep the cameras running when I when I filled back in the hole. Um, but the client had a bag of um, store-bought soil, and it took three quarters of the bag to fill that in. Look how clean those stones are. I mean, it looks like someone like put them in a rock polisher. So the hole at the right here, that hole there, just below the root, that was the original mole tunnel. So the entranceway to there is what the original tunnel looked like, and then they excavated the, all, all that soil around it, from top to bottom. So I just take some time to fill in the soil with what was left on with the, the outside. The Obviously, it's not enough so soil to suck up the, the rest of the foragers that were coming back from foraging, and also getting the rest of the swarming adults that were attacking me as they made their way back to the nest.
peep, 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 peep. Hunt turkey. Peep, 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 peep. Come on, boys. Come on, you old skipper. Old skipper. Oh, tell us your name is Tawayubu. I have a mess to clean up out here. Okay. Come on, birds. Ugh. I got some yummy ones. No. All right, so this is one of the first nests that I relocated this past season. Bald-faced hornet, Derlica vespula maculata, which is actually an aerial nest building yellow jacket. For all of you who've been with my channel for a while, you are tired of hearing me say that, but for my newer viewers, that's probably new information for you. These are yellow jackets, not hornets. A lot of misinformation, especially on YouTube itself. So you gotta make sure I clarify. This nest is absolutely humongous. I relocated this probably at the middle, early July. I wanted to make sure I got it on the glass, so that way as it grew, you'd be able to see it from the inside, pretty much like a large ant farm. So let's go inside and see what it looks like from behind the glass. stinks up here because of the European hornets. European hornets are just down through that trap door there. And they stinky. And that smell anyway. Alright, so this is the inside of the nest. And as you can see, it's phenomenal. So all this in here, that there, is all comb. And they built the envelope around the comb initially so I couldn't see into the nest but then as the season progressed they chewed down the layers of envelope to then uh, expose the back of the comb to the glass and now I can see in. So every one of these lines is a layer of envelope that they had laid on there. As the nest gets bigger it's not just one outside layer it's actually about 10 or 13 layers. It's a good size. All right, let's check out the next nest. What do we? Check out that next nest. All right, so this nest here, I think is pretty much done for the season. You can tell that because it has a lot of perforations in the envelope. And the perforations are from not being repaired frequently. So this envelope gets holes in it throughout the season and then the adults come on focus and then the adults actually uh, repair that as they go throughout the season so this nest is pretty close to the one up there as you can see never gave me a bother this season at all all right let's get on and check out the next one all right so the next one we're going to check out is the european hornet nest that i relocated into a box and put it inside the wall of my barn 
So, this is them here. They're doing very well. And I'm usually around them pretty much four times a day, checking them out, getting video, and they don't mind me at all. The fringing that you see that was chewed out along the outside was something they did to make the hole bigger. Let's see if we get her fanning the audio. They're not used to me holding a microphone up to them. <laughs> There she goes. Good job. Go on inside and feed somebody. All right, so let's go inside and take a gander. All right, so this is the box here. And that's the nest. It's hard to see up inside of there right now. They got so much fluid on the sides. I mean, they dampen this a little. That's a whole new bottom layer of comb since I think I showed you guys the last video. That thing is huge. So I'm going to be replacing this plexiglass while they're in there. And I'll be having that in an upcoming video. So that's the nest. So we're going to button them back up. They like it dark when they do their thing. So these are another colony of bald-faced hornets, aerial nest building yellow jackets that I had relocated here in the barn. Well, on the barn, so I could see through. And they're very temperamental because they have good memories of when they were relocated. But I put three different colonies side by side and they pretty much all decided to build in that one that one structure. So I'll be having a video of that coming up. All right, let's go back outside. Goodbye, European hornets. All right, so let's check out the other ones that I got going on here. Um, I'd relocated these probably the second nest that I relocated, which was back in like mid-July. So we'll check them out. So another colony that's doing really, really well. Still booming. still building you can tell that there's the active or the colony still active inside because the envelope is still very much intact once the colony starts to die down that's the first thing you notice is that the envelope hasn't been repaired in a while let's go around the tree it's a beautiful nest so when I put this nest here is about the size of a cantaloupe and then uh, as it grew it weighed down the branch that it was on <laughs> that branch was initially straight out and now you can see it's bent pretty hard so let's check out this next colony so these are actually the nests that I had relocated that you just saw inside the barn so I'm going to show you guys that from the outside They are very temperamental. They they have a good memory of what happened to them. So they, they get pretty unhappy with me being out here around the nest. But since they put the envelope on, they become less temperamental. That's actually a queen right there on the inside. I don't know if you can see her. A new queen. So it's cool to see new queens coming out. So we'll leave them be. So we have two more nests to go check out. Let's go check them out. So I'm a wasp nest removal expert. I'm not an exterminator. 
I don't do mice and termites and beetles and everything else. I just do wasps. And that encompasses yellow jackets, hornets, cicada killers, mud daubers, etc. So usually with my relocation videos, I get a lot of questions as to why do I relocate? Well, see, the thing is, is that not every nest can be relocated. So with like the 50 nests that I remove for um, in a couple of weeks, only about maybe two or three of them can actually be relocated if it's even possible. Um, so it really depends on a few factors whether or not I can actually relocate it. So wasps are super beneficial. Yellow jackets, hornets, cicada killers, mud daubers, all of them. They're beneficial in their own specific ways. So I like having them on my property because I hate pests. I hate flies, Japanese beetles, aphids, spotted lanternflies, and these ones take care of all of those. Plus, makes for great content to watch. So I like coming home in the evenings and watching them build on the nest. I like watching to see how, what their behavior's like, how they act inside the nest in the colonies late at night. I love seeing all that stuff, and I love sharing that with my viewers. So let's check out the latest nest here. All right, so unfortunately, I never actually kept the footage from this particular removal. Um, the numbers are starting to go down. You can tell because they're starting to lose a little bit of their envelope. Um, they're starting to lose some construction pieces here. But they're still working. There's still a few in here. So I know I don't have the uh, removal of this nest, but I know I have the uh, relocation. Oh, she's checking me out. What's up, girlfriend? You're good in the hood, girlfriend. Just keep doing what you're doing. All right, let's head on over to the other nest. So this nest is done. It finished up uh, about a week ago. All right, so you see this nest here? There's a lot of disrepair. A lot of the envelopes starting to fall by the wayside because nobody's there to repair it and fix it. It's a good nest though when it was there. Alright, so this nest was an eastern yellow jacket nest that I relocated back in the spring and a freaking possum got to it not even three days ago. So I wanted to show everybody what that was gonna be like when I dug it up at the end of the season. But unfortunately this is as big as the nest got. bit of comb here. Might have dug out a good bit. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. I know I haven't been posting too many videos lately, but I have gotten so much content, but I just haven't had enough time to really work on the videos from doing all these removals. So just wait patiently as the removals start to slow down my production of videos will start climbing back up. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos or something you'd like to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments, let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit the bell notification if you'd like to get updates anytime I do post a video. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel and I'll catch you guys on the next video.